Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Lubuntu. It's a new release, 21.10, based on the LXDE and LXQT desktop environment. But before we get started, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, or follow my channel. doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like our videos and like what the channel's doing, you can buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are in the description below. Lubuntu. Obviously, it's based on Ubuntu. We're going to open up their website real quick. And their website is lubuntu.net. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below. And it's just a very fast, lightweight operating system that lets you get work done and pretty much stays out of your way. It has really low hardware requirements. So that means you can put it on an older piece of hardware and really get a lot done. Their website covers the features, fully featured, lightweight operating system. You can scroll down. It's got a bunch of screenshots. And then it's got updates from when older releases were done. And then you can download at the bottom. And then up top, you got the blog. You got your forums. Should you have any problems with your download or problems after your install, you can come over here to the forum and get some questions answered pretty expeditiously. As you can see, there are a lot of them. Now, you can go to this forum or you can go to the official Ubuntu forums as well because it is based on Ubuntu and pretty much get any question that you have answered. So let's go back over and then you've got documentation, support, and then of course about. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close out of the web browser. If you download Lubuntu, put it on a USB, open it up in a virtual box. This is a screen you're met with. You do not get a welcome screen, but if you are familiar with Ubuntu, or you are a present user of Lubuntu, you'll be quite comfortable and right at home. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on the desktop. You have the options of creating something new, pasting, select all, invert selection, create launcher, desktop preferences. Let's open that up. And of course, you've got general, your icon size. You can select a font if you would like, text color, shadow color, and then minimum item margins. You can change that if you want to. Then you can go over to backgrounds. You can select a background color. You can select a picture and stretch it to fill the entire screen. And if you want to change it, I think you just click on browse. And they've got a couple different wallpapers over here to choose from. I do like the blue theme. I think I'm going to try something like, let's try that and open and apply. That didn't change anything, did it? No, it was the same wallpaper. Okay, let's try that one. Open, apply. There we go. That changed it up a little bit. I kind of like that. So we'll leave that up there. And then you've got a slideshow. You can set up a specific folder with wallpapers in it. Point this to it and it'll just revolve those wallpapers in a slideshow. And then advanced. If you've got icons on the desktop that you don't want to show, you can just come over here and click them off. And then hit apply. And they'll disappear other than the install Lubuntu icon. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. If you come down the bottom, you've got one single panel. Over to the right, you got time and date, internet, clipboard, sound, and then of course, removable media manager. And then if you right click on the panel, you can lock it, you can add a new panel, manage widgets, remove task manager, or you can configure task manager. So you have a little bit of control in here of what you can do. If you come over to the left, You've got Show Desktop, you've got Firefox, which we just looked at, and then let's go ahead and open this up. This should be PC Man File Manager. Let's double check about. It is PC Man QT. It's a nice, lightweight file manager. You've got your usual suspects over here, then you've got your home folders right here, and you can change this up if you want to make those a little bigger, or you can put them in a list mode, or in a detailed list mode. So you've got pretty much a couple different ways to customize that, but it's a fast, lightweight file manager, so you can get your work done and it stays out of your way. So let's close out of that. Down here, you've got your four desktops. And I did have a viewer the other day ask me about the four desktops because they weren't really sure while there were four down here. Most of you watching this video are familiar with multiple desktops, but those of you who aren't, we're on desktop one right now. I'm going to open up the file manager that's on desktop one. Let's say I need to do another task, so we want to leave File Manager open. We go to Desktop 2. We can open up Firefox. So Firefox is now open on Desktop 2. Let's make that a little smaller. But then let's say we have to do something else on top of that. We can open up Desktop number 3, and then you're open here. But the beauty of it is, is you can go back to your File Manager, 
Firefox, or a blank desktop. So we're going to go back to desktop number two, close that out, and then go back to desktop number one and close that out. Let's go ahead and open up the Lubuntu application menu. And when you open it up, you get a nice small menu that way it doesn't take up all of your screen. You've got accessories, KCalc, QT Pass, Compton, Noble Note. You've got graphics, Image Magic, LibreOffice Draw, Screen Grab, Internet. You've got Firefox, Transmission, Trojita. Is that for mail, I take it? Let me double check. It does look like a mail client. So what can we do here? I'm going to try to put in a email account. So give me just a second. I'll be right back. Okay, it looks as though you have to manually enter all of your email information in here. But because I'm just doing a quick look, I'm not going to go through that. But Trojita is included for mail accounts. So that's just something for you all to take into account. So let's go ahead and close out of this. I'm going to go ahead and go back down. Office, you've got the LibreOffice suite out of the box. Sound and video, Pulse Audio, VLC. System tools, install, KDE Partition Manager, Muon Packet Manager. Let's go ahead and look at Muon. That's where you're going to get most of your software. And it has opened up, so let's go ahead and make it just a little bigger so it's easier to see. And you've got categories over here. You've got everything from audio all the way down to video, word processing, Let's look at video software, and I guess we can just do a search up here for like OBS Studio, and there's OBS Studio, so I guess you would just mark it and mark for installation. It's marked, and then it'll tell you all the dependencies that are needed to install it, and then you would click OK, and then you would just come up here and click Apply Changes. So that's that's pretty simple. I guess you could do the same thing for something like Caden Live as well, but Caden Live isn't showing. Interesting. Okay, so I did it under all and it showed. So I guess it's not categorized as a video software. Interesting. So Caden Live is there. So I guess you could just leave it on all and do all the searches that you needed to do. So I guess we could still do OBS Studio. There it shows up. And then GIMP. And there's GIMP. Okay, so basically it's loosely a little bit like Synaptic Package Manager, whereas you would pick the application mark it for installation, then it would show you the dependencies, you would mark those, and then you would apply the changes and it would install everything. Okay, so that's Muon Package Manager. Looks like it's real handy, and quite honestly, I like using package managers like this. I do like software centers, don't get me wrong, but for some reason, I guess maybe because I started on Linux 13 years ago, we didn't really have software centers or software stores per se, I lived in Synaptic Package Manager, so maybe that's why I'm more comfortable with it. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And I'm going to come down here. As you can see, looks like Trojita is still showing. I'm going to quit that so it's not running in the background. And back over to System Tools, Q-Terminal, Startup Disk Creator, QPS. Now, is that our resource monitor? It seems to be. You can do it in a linear. You can do it in a tree. You can do it in a thread. But what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to close that. I want to find a terminal. So we'll put terminal, Q terminal. And let's see if they have HTOP installed. And they do have HTOP installed. I have issued this machine three gigabytes of RAM. At present, we are using 664 megabytes. So that's not too bad at all. That is pretty lightweight. That's not the lightest I've seen. I've seen some XFCEs run at about 400 but still, that's 669, 670, that's not bad at all. Real lightweight, you can throw it on an older PC and definitely get some work done and definitely get performance. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Yes, let's come back down. Preferences, software sources, apply full upgrade, additional drivers, about LXQT. Then you have leave and lock screen. So that's a really quick look at Lubuntu 21.10. It's really lightweight, it's fast, and low on resources, so if you put this on a newer system, it's just going to fly, and if you decide to put it on older hardware, you're going to get some great use out of it. Is Lubuntu 21.10 something you might download, throw in a USB, or put in a virtual machine, and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today, please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and you like the videos we're doing, you can buy us a cup of coffee. Or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.